Hi, and welcome back. So let me guess, you've been working with Arduino for a while now, and you're getting pretty good at it, and you want to take it to that next step of instead of programming just the Arduino development board, like the Arduino Nano, you want to program the chip that runs it, the Atmega 328P-AU microcontroller. I'm going to show you how to do just that. Here are two breadboard circuits running an identical Arduino blink sketch, turning an LED on and off every second. First, in an Arduino Nano running the blink sketch, after it boots up, the LED starts blinking. That same sketch or program has been uploaded into this Atmega 328P-AU microcontroller installed in this clamshell test adapter. After powering it up on this breadboard power supply, it immediately starts blinking. Be sure to note that the standalone microcontroller didn't require any boot up time and started blinking immediately. To burn the bootloader and upload my sketch, I used an XP4627 ISP programmer that I bought online for about $15. Here is a schematic showing the basic circuit, including the in-system programming ISP connections. Power is connected to VCC and ground through pins 4 and 5, along with an optional 10 microfarad decoupling capacitor. Pins 7 and 8 are connected through twin 22 picofarad capacitors to ground with an oscillator crystal across them. Pin 14, which is mapped to Arduino pin 10, fires the LED in our blink sketch. Pins 15 and 16 are the MOSI and MISO communication lines to our ISP programmer SPI interface. Pin 29 is the reset pin, which is pulled high through a 10 kilo ohm resistor. The programmer pulls this low briefly to initiate the programming mode. Power is also connected to AVCC and ground through pins 18 and 21 through another optional 10 microfarad decoupling capacitor. Finally, the clock for the SPI programming interface is connected to pin 17. The six ISP programming connections are hooked into the 10-pin plug at these locations. Here's a schematic of my TQFP32 test socket. I bought this online for $20 and promptly cut off the dip adapter so that it could span nicely across two breadboards side by side. Pins 1 through 32 on, of the chip are connected through to pins 1 through 32 of the test socket. Then I connected the programming lines. These can re remain in place while the circuit is in use, but you should never power the USB programmer and the breadboard power supply at the same time. I haven't tried it, but I can imagine that bad things could happen. Now we're ready to burn a bootloader and upload a sketch. I'll take out this old chip and we'll use a fresh Atmega 328 chip just for the purposes of this video example. They come in this tape and reel type packaging arrangement. These chips only cost about $2 each, so I bought several spare. They come blank, so the Arduino IDE is not going to recognize it until after we've burnt a bootloader. After a bit of a struggle to open it and inspect it, I inserted the fresh chip into the adapter. Be careful to check that the circle is in the right orientation at pin 1. When you open the Arduino IDE, you'll notice that the USB ASP is one of the programming options. Then you'll need to check in Device Manager that the correct driver is being used. The default driver didn't seem to work for me. To change the driver, I downloaded and ran a tool called Zadig. I listed all devices, chose USB ASP, then selected LibUSB-K, and replace the driver. 
Then I needed to add an Arduino core for the Atmega 328 chip. In the Arduino IDE, it's not available by default, and it's also not in the board manager list. So I opened preferences, added the correct board manager URL, and while we're here, we need to select the upload verbose output dump. Otherwise, we won't be able to see whether our uploads are successful. Now, when I went back to board manager, Minicore was added to the list. See how it shows the Atmega products? Now we can install. In the list of boards, all of the previous boards are still available, but there is another category called Minicore. We select Atmega 328 chip. Now we're presented with configuration options for the chip. Clock speed, brownout detection, retain EEPROM, compiler LTO, chip variant, bootloader. If you have the PB version of this chip, you'll need to change these settings. I've left them as is. Now change the programmer to USB ASP mini core and burn the bootloader. Success! Now we're ready to upload a sketch. I picked the example basic blink sketch in the Arduino IDE. Obviously we no longer have an onboard LED, so I've changed to pin 10 where I've connected the LED. Now before uploading we can change the board to an Arduino Nano because that board uses the same exact chip that we've programmed. Then I changed the programmer back to USB ASP. And then I selected upload using programmer. Great! It worked! Now let's test it. Now I've unplugged the USB programmer and powered up the breadboard and perfect! A blinking LED. Thanks for watching. I hope that was beneficial. See you next time.